In this video, I will go over the optimal video export settings that you can use to export your videos for social media. Because most of the time, when you finish editing your video and then upload it to your YouTube channel, when you play it back, you notice that the quality of your video has reduced and does not look as clear as the original rendered video. Well, today, I will provide you with the best settings for all the social media platform. So stay tuned. Let's start by focusing on the long form normal type of videos. In my timeline, you can see that I have a video completed and I want to export it. Head over to the export tab or press Ctrl M. Moving on to the top left section, you have a range of options to choose from. You can change the file name and select the output location. The next section is where you'll want to focus your attention. For the format, we recommend H264 as it is the most widely used video file format. For the preset, we suggest starting with match source adaptive high bitrate, which automatically determines the best export settings for your footage. However, we will tweak these settings a bit more. Under the video tab, you'll find basic video settings. Double check by clicking the match source button to ensure the export video matches your sequence settings. Below, you'll find additional options. We recommend checking render at maximum depth if you work with 10-bit color and maximum render quality, if you're exporting 4K footage to a lower resolution, this will retain all the data as Premiere Pro sizes it down on export. Moving down to the encoding settings, we suggest choosing hardware encoding next to performance as it's faster than software encoding. Next to the profile, change it from main to high. Depending on your footage, some of the other settings may vary, but these are the settings you'll want to have in place when exporting your video. So when we scroll down more, this is a very important section called the bitrate settings. But before moving to bitrate, let me tell you about Envato Elements, our today's sponsor, which provides an amazing collection of video templates and a vast library of video assets for all types of software. With just a single subscription, you can download an unlimited number of video templates, including transitions, openers, promos, titles, and much more. Envato Elements also provides a wide range of software for selecting templates. Additionally, you can also download stock videos, music, sound effects, graphics, and other valuable assets. Download the templates you need and use them easily by dragging and dropping. Check out the Envato Elements link in the description below for a seven day free trial. So what bitrate is how much data is in each second of the video when you export it outside of Premiere Pro. So as you can see here, we have a few different options. We have CBR, VBR 1 pass, and VBR 2 pass. What CBR stands for is constant bitrate. And you can imagine as if the whole video has the same bitrate for the entire duration. VBR stands for variable bitrate. And what variable bitrate is great for is say, if you have a video and you're exporting it, and maybe some parts have more action in it, and other parts are more static. What VBR does, it essentially dedicates more bits per second to the more action type of areas in your video, and less bits per second to the more static areas of your image. So, it optimizes the performance and how much data is dedicated to certain parts of your video. You'll notice that there's one pass and two passes. The difference is, the one pass means that Premiere Pro will just do one pass of your video. Essentially, exporting at one time and two pass means that it will export it once and it will export it again to just double check the accuracy of how much data is in the final video. So in general, I recommend VBR one pass. You can do two passes if you want to be safe, but in most cases, one pass is fine. Now the other important setting is the target bitrate. So you'll notice that if we slide this slider to the right, the estimated file size increases quite a bit. This is because we're adding more data to each second of the video. Now, when we slide it to the left, you'll notice that the estimated file size decreases. When you slide it to the right, it increases the quality while also increasing the file size. And when you slide it to the left, it decreases the quality and also decreases the file size. So what do I recommend? I recommend usually going with eight MBPs. This is a pretty good baseline. I don't recommend going under it for HD footage. You'll start to notice more pixelation inside your video. Now, if it's helpful, I'll throw up this chart that kind of shows what the bitrate should be for different resolutions. And depending on your video project, if you're working on 4K 720 or 2K, you can check this chart to see what your bitrate settings should be. Now for audio, I would recommend staying on AAC. This is a great high quality audio codec and 320 kilobits per second is a great setting for the bitrate of audio. 
Once you're done, that's pretty much all the things you have to worry about. You can click the export button at the bottom right corner and you're good to go. So that's long form content. Let's talk about short form content for Instagram Reels or TikTok. The most important thing to keep in mind is the aspect ratio. So I always recommend checking your sequence settings and making sure your width is 1080 and your height is 1920 before you export your video. Same thing as before, match source adaptive high bitrate. We just want to export the 1080 by 1920 source. And then when we scroll down, the same thing as before, we'll change the profile to high, hardware encoding. And when we scroll down, bitrate settings usually recommend five to 10 megabits per second for Instagram. So I recommend just choosing 10. That way it has a lot more data. And that's pretty much all the things that you need to adjust when it comes to TikTok or Instagram Reels. In the end, what you can do is save this as a preset. We can name our preset, and then once we're done, you'll notice that it'll be displayed in our preset menu when we click the dropdown. So that's how to export your video inside Premiere Pro for both long form videos and short form videos. That's pretty much for this video. I hope this video helped export your video. Make sure to subscribe and comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.